Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 314. September 22nd or 23rd of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam! We have so much to talk about this week. Yes, and as always, so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Good news, pal. Your buddy Bray Wyatt sure seems to like he's coming back to WWE. What do you think of this White Rabbit stuff they're doing? Uh, you know, I I think it is it is a gimmick, much like most of Bray Wyatt's stuff, much like the Malachi Black stuff. Uh, it is designed for people that like to watch Easter egg YouTube videos where it's like a guy making a shocked face and there's like a little red circle and he's like watching a Spider-Man trailer or something. You know, that's what this feels like it's targeted at. It's targeted at like an uber nerd who wants wrestling to be more than it is when it comes to lore and storyline and so for those people, I'm sure this is very exciting. For me, I think it's just dreadful because at the end of the day, whatever you do, your gimmick, your promos, whatever, whatever, what have you, at the end of the day, it's supposed to make me want to see you have a wrestling match. And quite frankly, that's not something Bray Wyatt has ever been good at, is uh, making me want to see him wrestle. So <laughs> either by his uh, his character work or his actual wrestling. So you know, not jazzed about it, but hey, that's people will be excited. Some people will be excited, sure. I uh, I don't I am, would still like to see a little bit more uh, concrete evidence that, that this is Bray Wyatt before I go ahead and say it's Bray Wyatt. But it's like just by process of elimination, who else could it possibly be? Right, Braun's already back. If they were going to. I guess I know that Killer Cross in one of his other places had this nickname for a while, which made people think it's him. But why would you? I mean, I guess they did do that to him (laughs) the first time he was on the main roster where they brought him up and then changed his gimmick like six weeks in. But uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, to me, it's like if it's a new guy, Braun's already back. Cross is already back. Unless it's an NXT name that they're calling up. I guess it could be, could it be, uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Gacy and his, his two guys. Sure. It could be. Yeah. Joe Gacy and the dyad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Together, together they're called the schism. So the team is the die. The two guys are the dyad. Correct. The three of them together is the schism. Correct. I yes, see. All right. That's right. That's right. It's dumb, but it's, you know, it's it's NXT. It's really it's pretty low on the list of things that should bug you about that program. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's 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 inoffensive to me. I mean, look, you know, the elite were all in Bullet Club, but rest when the three of those guys wrestled together, they were the elite. It it happens. Sure. There are subgroups within a larger group all the time in wrestling. Sure. So. Uh, big big news in WWE. Uh, Roman Reigns is going to wrestle Logan Paul in Saudi Arabia, as the prophecy foretold. <laughs> I had to uh, watch uh, Logan Paul's podcast last week uh, when Roman Reigns was on it, and it sure seemed like they were building something. But I thought, ah, he's just shooting his own angle over here. And um, no, turns out that uh, he was not shooting his own angle. This was a, a WWE angle that they shot on Logan Paul's podcast. And um, I guess maybe this is a big deal to someone somewhere. I it's a Saudi Arabia show. I don't know how this is going to go as a match. I don't know who this is for, (laughs) but okay. Logan Paul seems to be popular. In as much as anyone can be popular in 2022. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a massive heel every time he's stood he's stepped in front of the wrestling audience Uh, so we'll have to see how this goes but what do you think of uh, Roman Reigns versus Logan Paul I mean I'm just excited that Roman's feuding with a real star finally 
got that Drew business over with, and now we got we got a real star for for Roman to wrestle. I don't I don't know. Like you might as well. You're probably paying that guy a lot of money to be on your show, so push him. I don't like. He had a pretty inoffensive match with Miz for his first ever singles match on on live television at the at the Summerfest. So Rowan Reigns is a better wrestler than the Miz, so this could be just as good. They'll smoke and mirrors it. I'm sure there will be interference, and he'll do another big dive. And it, you know, Roman Reigns matches in general are not like. I mean, they have a pattern to them. So as as we've discussed many times here, so. You know, is is he can lay there while Roman monologues, and and then he just has to do learn a you know a couple spots and a comeback, and they do whatever the finish is. There you go. Like it's it's fine. It's I don't I'm not offended by this in the sense that, well, yeah, you might as well put him. Roman Reigns is your biggest full time wrestling star. He's not really full time anymore, but is your biggest your biggest star that you have that's regularly on these shows or semi regularly on the show. You bring in this guy from the outside world to do a few spots for you a year. Yeah, this is one. Like, I, do the people of does the Saudi prince care <laughs> about Logan Paul? As like, are they selling this as like a big time celebrity coming in the way Tyson Fury or some of those folks that worked the previous Saudi shows did? Uh, you know, maybe that's maybe that's part of it too. They want. They need some big hook and they don't have another legend to bring back for, for Roman to fight. So you get, uh, you just sell, sell the, uh, the Saudis that it's a, you know, a big time, you know, cross media superstar on the show. Ask for Yokozuna. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I do. And the ultimate warrior, I believe. <laughs> they ask for Yokozuna. <laughs> and by God, Vince gave them a sumo wrestler who had never had a pro wrestling match in his life in that rumble. <laughs> Sure. Aside from that, uh, WWE did the self-fulfilling prophecy thing this week where there were two Monday Night Football games, so they really didn't put anything important on Raw. So (laughs) they thought no one was going to watch Raw, and they also gave you very little reason to watch Raw. Like Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title, I think, was on that show, and it was on first. So you could Mm -hmm. you could watch you could watch the match that you wanted to see. And, uh, and then you could go watch two football games. Um, it was in San Jose. Bailey got to meet event in her hometown. That was nice on the whatever anniversary of having her first match in the same city. So that was cool. Um, not all, you know, Riddle and Seth Rollins stuff continued. Um, Bailey announced she's going to face Bianca at extreme rules. And uh, yeah, so the, we're on the road to extreme rules, which is now just uh, 16 days away as we record this on a Thursday night. Yeah, these these Romanless pay-per-views don't have a lot of uh, fire behind them anyway. But as you said, you you, uh, you factor in them uh, punting, so to speak, with the with the two football games on. And yeah, it was a uh, lot, lot of I thought pretty you know good wrestling matches on the show. And you set some stuff up for next week. Uh, you, you you tried to give the uh, Butch and Butch's friend a win because uh, they're going to wrestle for the tag title soon. So you, I mean, you did you did some stuff, but it was very much a let's just kick the can down the road on a week where we're not going to get crushed. We'll we'll try a little harder. Um, so yeah, it's you you've got your regulars that are being that are kind of all over these shows every week for the most part. And a lot of them are really talented people like Kevin Owens and, you know, Gargano has a slot there and Rollins and then Lashley's featured very heavily. Unfortunately, the Miz and uh, the, the, the murderer are are on the show every week. Uh, Dexter Loomis. I couldn't think of his name. Um, I kept thinking of his TNA name, but it was uh, Lonnie Donegan. That's right. (laughs) But uh, they did one of my least favorite spots in wrestling, which is when the guy comes up through the floor. Like, it's just never not looked hokey for me. And it works in maybe like 1996 WWF, but you're still doing it in, in 2022. And it's it's pretty lame. I have a legitimate question about the Dexter Lumis stuff. Uh-huh. So when he came up through the ring this week on Raw, he he cut through the canvas with like the biggest 
cartoon sized knife you've ever seen in your entire life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the week before Miz was trying to climb out of the steel cage or two weeks before Miz is trying to climb out of the cage and he uh, Loomis sticks his head out from under the ring. And anyway, there are all these very uh, meme kind of spots, all these very wily e. coyote Looney Tunes spots that could be played for comedy. But his character, I think, is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be serious or is this supposed to be Wiley e. Coyote Roadrunner comedy? I, I, yeah, it, again, because all of this stuff was played for jokes in NXT, you would think that it's being played for jokes here. And like Miz, Miz is certainly doing a very cartoonish, over the top reaction to all that stuff but i don't yeah i don't get the feeling necessarily that it's a complete supposed to be a complete comedy show which you know why else would you do it if it isn't supposed to be a complete haha well that's that's why i asked because i thought maybe they were trying to do it i don't know i don't know what paul thinks of um of comedy of wrestling comedy frankly i don't know I th- I think he likes his uh well I mean we know what he thinks is funny based on what he and Sean did on television for t- 20, 20 years, um so I don't know Dex like he pushed Dexter Loomis as a semi serious act in NXT so it's not like it's completely beyond the pale that he could see this guy as like a a serious badass I just I don't. Uh, I don't like Dex like like obviously the name it's like Dexter's not like a like a hot show like that show I know they did like a revival a couple of years ago but like it's not it's not like a relevant thing no so so I don't it's not like oh you're being cool and edgy by having this this character on your show it's just like it feels like it should be like a character straight out of 1990s WWF superstars and he should be wrestling Doink the Clown but here he is on raw in like important segments of the show, like top of the hour or, or main event segments quite regularly, which would make you think that Paul doesn't see him as, as a complete joke. And I would just like to know why. Yeah, I can't, I can't figure it out. Well, the other major wrestling company in North America, AEW ran a tennis stadium this week for grand slam. They crowned a new world champion. They crowned new tag team champions. The all Atlantics title stayed at home. The interim women's world championship stayed around Tony Storm's waist. Chris Jericho won the Ring of Honor world title. The big news is Soraya debuting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soraya? Soraya? Soraya. Yeah, I thought it was Soraya, and then someone said Soraya, and I started questioning myself. Uh, The former Paige debuted. I'm not sure how much she's going to wrestle. I'm not sure if she knows how much she's going to wrestle, but she's uh, gotten herself a paycheck here. Anyway, (laughs) um, new world champion, new tag team champions, Soraya debuts. What did you think of uh, Grand Slam? I mean, yeah, I thought it was a, a pretty watchable wrestling show i think the the crowd helped i think they did a really good job i thought of like showing off the crowd in a way that AEW doesn't normally and really tried to make it feel like a big show and the crowd was into not everything uh orange cassidy and pack really had to work to get them to care about their match and the uh, the actual match that the women had was not exactly uh people weren't exactly going crazy for that but Overall, it was a very good crowd. You had a bunch of a bunch of, I thought, pretty good wrestling matches. I don't think the acclaimed, it's one of those things where if you could marry the match they had in Chicago with the result they had here, it's like maybe the greatest, you know, the best AEW match all year. But instead they had a not as good match, but with the finish that everybody wanted this time. So that you get your your happy moment there of of the good guys winning. And I know it's, it's kind of Max Gaster's hometown. So you, you have that tie in as well for it. It was, it was a fun, enjoyable show. You got some new things. I think AEW needed 
just a good show with a hot crowd to uh, burn off a little bit of the funk <laughs> that's been surrounding the shows for the last uh, few weeks. And I don't know if that did this or not, but as uh, you know, mock you, it was a little bit of a reset. You've got new champs, you've got a new star in the women's division and you've got Boxley's champion. Uh, and as of rampage on Friday, he'll have a new challenger, which I think is pretty interesting building up a big title defense on TV before you would think inevitably he starts the, the MJF feud going towards the November pay-per-view. So they, you know, they got stuff on the horizon in a vacuum. It was a good show. And like I said, I thought the atmosphere maybe elevated stuff that would have just been okay or good to great by just the way the crowd was so into everything. And specifically, Soraya, what are your thoughts? I mean, in a pre, <laughs> in a pre Edge and Brian Danielson and Christian and Sting world, I'd maybe be concerned. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Like, I guess I guess somebody found a doctor to clear, her, right? Like, uh, I don't I don't know about that. Frankly, I don't know what their process is. Sure. Um, you know, I I genuinely don't don't know. I mean, I, you think about. I feel like I remember reading less than maybe two years ago that Seamus had real bad spinal stenosis. He was out for a long time. I think like just prior to the pandemic. And uh, and it was like, it'll be a miracle if he makes it another year. And here he is like two years later being like the in-ring MVP for for WWE in, in 2022. So clearly things have changed as far as like what a neck or spinal injury means and what is possible to heal from and what isn't. But yeah, I don't I don't know what the the medical process is for somebody like that getting signed by AEW. I don't know if she got a third party to clear her and then took that to AEW and said, Hey, I want to wrestle and WWE won't let me because their doctor won't clear me. I don't, you know, you, you, you'll have to wait for her to go on Renee's podcast or whatever, I guess, to explain the process of this, but yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess we'll see. <laughs> I feel like if you had to retire at 27 or whatever she was at the time, because She'd been bumping nonstop for 15 years and was in was in bad shape and bad enough shape that a, the doctor looked at a 27 year old's neck and said, there's no way you can heal from this in a way that would be safe for you to ever wrestle again. Yeah, certainly there's some there's cause for concern if that person a couple of years later decides to come back to wrestling. Um, so, yeah, I think it's fair and good for any and all people involved to uh, have some ins- uh, assurances from uh, probably more than one medical professional. If in fact she does plan on getting, uh, getting back in the ring. Indeed, 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 indeed. So um, what else do we have here? And we have, People in New Japan coming down with hand, foot, and mouth disease. Actually, just one person. Mm-hmm. Kushida came down with hand, foot, and mouth. Weird. <laughs> just not a disease you hear about uh, too often in in the year of our Lord 2022. Apparently, it's very common among children. And it's spreading around the United States in children's classrooms quite a bit. I yeah. guess. I guess. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's the curse, right? They finally got clap crowds back, and now any number of gold rush era diseases will befall their wrestlers until uh, until we're just watching Okada wrestle, I don't know, Dookie every week or something. <laughs> sure. Do, I don't know. I don't know. We got, got a bunch of shows. <laughs> yep. You know? Yep. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> yep. NXT was taped this week. NXT is taped next week. So not a whole lot going on there. They're building up to Halloween Havoc, which is still a month away. So there is that. Ruby Soho has to get her nose operated on after she broke it, uh, taking a knee to the face at 
the pay-per-view uh, at the beginning of this month. Um, hate to see that. Hate to see that. Just because it was such a stupid... That whole thing. They almost... They tried to kill Ruby Soho in that match. I mean, mm-hmm. we're going back a month now, but that was like <laughs> so like, bad and so careless. Poor Ruby. Like that happened on a, on the night of the scrum, and like so, so it was like the fifteenth most interesting thing that we almost saw a death on live pay per view in the uh, or on the pre show rather on that night. But yeah, it was it was rough. Like the fact that she only came out of that with a broken nose because. They dropped her right on her neck at one point in that match as well. Um, so, like, the fact that she only has a broken nose might be a little bit of a blessing in some weird way. But, yeah, at the same time, from, from what she talked about, it sounded like she's, like, a, it's like a septum issue and it might be broken in multiple places. So I'm sure breathing is is nigh in, impossible out of her nose at the moment. So I'm sure it's quite miserable. <laughs> Uh, my friend Trish Stratus had her appendix out. She thought her <laughs> her appendix was going to burst. She had to have her appendix removed, and she's returning to, for season two of Canada's Got Talent. God bless her soul. Oh, that's good. Like, who else is who else is on that show as a as a host? Like Howie Mandel, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Neil is Neil Patrick Harris Canadian. He feels like he'd be Canadian. No, he's not. okay. This is uh, this feels like mo- <laughs> this feels like this feels like mockery. I don't know. Like every country has one of those shows. There's no problem with Canada. I'm just trying to think of like appropriate Canadian celebrities that uh, that uh, that could fit fit the bill for a show like that. Neil Patrick Harris, born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, by the way. Oh, all right. So pretty much as geographically far away uh, in the U.S. <laughs> as you could get from Canada. Sure. All right, uh, that's all I got. You got anything else you want to cover? No, not not a lot. I mean, I, spoilers for Rampage, if you could possibly care. And by the time you listen to this, it for all we know, Rampage may have already happened. But uh, great Muda's on Rampage this week. <laughs> that that it, this is his that, retirement year, isn't it? Allegedly, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he got to team up with Sting one last time, and that's. I like just a random last year. If you remember that rampage show ended with homicides uh, coming out. So I like the idea of just a random old guy showing up on the grand slam rampage every year uh, for, for now in, and in, and in perpetuity. I don't, I don't hate it. It's nice. It's good. I'm glad they did it. Um, I'm, t- I'm, I'm old and I'm not old enough to remember great Muda's WCW stuff. Mm-hmm. So who is this for is, is kind of my question. But. For that, that over 50 plus audience that got them to 1.2 million last week. Yeah. And then they're just a tick over a million this week. Yeah. Weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's one of those things where were people just tuning in because they thought there would be an update on on the punk elite stuff did they just like there was nothing on that show last week that uh seemed to justify that strong of a viewership and yet not and not only that i thought the show the week before that was atrocious Mm -hmm. (laughs) they built an audience (laughs) yes and i thought the one the week before was absolutely dreadful yeah, I mean, so there's there's little bits that they can hang their hat on. They've been over a million for like five straight weeks, and that has only happened a couple other times in their history. Um, and they they had their first ever million dollar television gate, so like they've you know they've got little bits to hang their hat on. But yeah, you would think coming off of a really strong rating and having multiple world championship matches and and all of that and ta- new tag team champions and and all of these big stars on the show, people that have been proven to move viewership, including MJF and Orange Cassidy and people like that who aren't necessarily even thought of as the tippy top stars, but who generally do pretty well in that department to, you know, I mean, again, it's nothing to sneeze at. They were still number one on cable for the evening, but it is, it is just fascinating that there's, there's just no rhyme or reason for seemingly anything or why people tune in on any given week. Like with Raw for the last couple of weeks, it makes sense because 
more people have been watching. So the NFL actually has a raw audience that they cut into, which they did not have the last couple of years. Right. Uh, but now that the viewership for raw has been higher, they can unfortunately lose more when they have stiffer competition. Whereas AEW's numbers, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not aware of any particularly stiff Wednesday evening competition. It's not like there was an NBA game on or anything that you would think would really hurt them. So yeah, I mean, you can, you can glass half full it and say, Hey, did a million dollar gate and then did another week over a million viewers. Or you can look at it and go, well, why did people tune in to the previous week's show, which was a setup show and then not for the actual, (laughs) what we were trying to deliver based off of that setup show. It's, it's, yes, I don't understand any of it. Anyway. And again, there's just an, like, if you told me that ratings were absolute BS and that the system, the system trying to calculate TV viewership is wrong, mm-hmm. I would probably believe you. But mm-hmm. as I've said probably 50 times in real life and on this show now, when last time I did like really looked at WWE ratings, it was like four months ago. And it was like the only people that ever moved quarter hours were Becky Lynch and Roman Reigns. And it was like the only two people that were ever protect, protected in their booking at the time. Mm-hmm. It was like, that makes me think that there is validity to these numbers and that they did do a good job with their, however Nielsen does their sample sizes and everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I can't figure it out. My, my understanding is that the Nielsen boxes are a series of tubes. I'm uh, not sure. I'm not sure exactly how it all works, but uh Sure. Sure. I, I, it's one of those things where like, I don't, I don't live and die by it because I don't, you know, as I, as I quite frequently like to advocate for on the show, I don't uh, make, I don't tie my enjoyment of wrestling to which uh, corporation is producing it for me. You know, just kind of try to like what I like and watch what I like and, and, and just, that kind of stuff. You just hate capitalism. Is what it is. Well, sure. But also, I don't wear a you know a Warner Brothers T-shirt either. It's weird if you do. It would be weird if you did. Uh, but people buy shirts that just have an AEW logo on it, for instance. But anyway, my point being, <laughs> so the ratings aren't interesting to me in that way. Like, it, I mean, it was funny when they were killing NXT every week. That was funny because it led to you know Vince uh, finding a new son uh, <laughs> for the second time. But uh, I mean, that part was funny, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't gain a lot of enjoyment or pain from the shows being up or down in ratings, but it is just fascinating if you just look at it and you look what what was on this show and it's like, okay, all these guys are on it. Some of these people have moved numbers. Certainly this guy has, and this person has, and this person's segment usually does all right. And it's like, nope, they got crushed this week or man, they came off a great show last week and it really felt like they did a really good job of hitting on these big important things for the following week. Again, this could be any company and you're like, and then the next week it's the same number or it's down and there's just no strong rhyme or reason for it. Other than like you said, that you can maybe see some patterns as far as what individual brings up the, the demos for a, a, their particular quarter hour. It doesn't seem like the week to week total viewership is ever, there's ever like a, an understandable reason for why it's up or down most of the time, unless there's, you know, just really stiff competition around it. Sure. All right. I don't know. Sorry. I didn't mean to do 20 minutes of ratings talk, but here we went. Well, we had time to fill for once. Very rare. All right. Well, uh, until next time, everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. This is old news by this point, but has there been a more spectacular way to lose a football game than the Ravens? (sighs) Dropping, what was it, 28 points to, uh, to the uh, Dolphins in the fourth quarter? Uh, it was, I mean, the lead may have been 28 at one point. I think by the time they got to the fourth, it was only 21. But still, it was like okay. 21 with eight minutes left. <laughs> Unbelievable.
Like it's so funny to me because the first half felt like the good the good year. Yes. <laughs> the good uh-huh. Lamar year where they just dominate, even though they didn't get points and they you know, on that fourth down yeah. and in the red zone, it's like, okay, we still took 10 minutes off the clock. We could, you know, we we have we turn the ball over, but it's inside their own their own 10 or whatever. This is fine. Like this is going good. And then the second half, it's like just three and out, three and out, three and out. <laughs> can't run the ball to save our lives can't can't have a long drive for anything and then like i mean you can't just point to the to the fourth you know the decision to go forward on that fourth down but it's like you look at that and you're like well that secondary was really tired <laughs> and maybe turning the ball over at midfield wasn't a great idea with how beat up your secondary was <laughs> dude if you score 38 points you should win <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i I I put none of that on the offense. I put none of that on going for it on that fourth down at the forty yard or thirty eight yard line or whatever. It's like even even if it it, it was at like the forty or forty one, I think so. It would have been a fifty eight yarder or something for Tucker. Yeah, he's the greatest kicker in the history of the world. He's also only ever hit two field goals longer than that ever, mm-hmm. and one of them was the all time record. And both were in, in Detroit, weren't they? Right. Both were in the dome. Yes. So it's like you're asking a lot there to begin with. Second of all, it, it at a certain point, I would have been very tempted to just put my wide receivers out there in the secondary. <laughs> but like, look, your only job is don't let Tyreek Hill and Waddle run past you. <laughs> that was their only job, really. It's like they could have given up. They could have given up a lot of points. <laughs> All they had to do was just not give up a lot of quick touchdowns. Yep. And they, they couldn't do it. It's like your only job, don't let this guy run past you. And they couldn't do it. <laughs> right. It's just like time management wise. How do you allow for there to be enough time for a team to score that many times off of you? I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Two times. Ty- Ugh. Also, it's it's just the same problems we've always had. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's no pass runs. Justin Houston has been good in these first two games, which is kind of mind blowing because he's 175 years old and he was here last year <laughs> and pr- pretty terrible last year. But like other teams have multiple pass rushers, and it's like we don't have one. <laughs> yeah, like, and now the secondary. Uh, Marcus Peters is coming up is now 29 years old, just kind of that age where uh, you, you either get moved to safety or or you still play you know, or it's your like your last year as a good corner. And he's coming off major, you know, major reconstructive knee surgery. That's that's bad. And he looked like a guy coming off reconstructive knee surgery as every player on the field just ran by him on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, the rest of the secondary was. The safeties were healthy, but we just had, we uh, we had no healthy cornerbacks, which mm-hmm. tur- turns out to be a problem. <laughs> so a bad a bad secondary <laughs> and an inability to get any sort of pressure on a quarterback <laughs> t- turns out to be a bad combination. Yeah, but it's this is like year three of this now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> like yeah, we've <laughs> we've year- this discussion a lot. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it's at least year four of it. The 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 first year, the Lamar MVP year, they realized. I mean, we were the best football team in the league by leaps and bounds that mm-hmm. year. I have no idea how we lost that game to the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was absolutely depressing. But we realized, well, we have a complete inability to get any pressure on the quarterback. So we're going to go out and we're going to trade for Marcus Peters, who was three years younger then and a very good cornerback at the time. We'll put him with our other uh, all pro cornerback and we're just, we can't rush you. So we're going to cover you. It's like, well, now we can't rush you or cover you. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, uh, obviously, that wasn't an issue this game because they had takeaways. And that's the other thing, too, is usually the teams that score a lot of points also have a lot of takeaways because the, the other team has to pass it 58 right. times right. because they're down by 21 points before the second you know before the second half starts. Right. But somehow that did happen. We did have takeaways. <laughs> but then somehow in that fourth quarter, 
they just stopped being able to, you know, get any sort of success. And I know, I know what's his name got injured in the, in the second half too, but it's like, just, just rough. <laughs> just, yeah. I think it comes down to if you, if you are the offense and you put 38 points up on the team and with less than a minute left, they're like, all right, <laughs> you got to go out and win us this game. You're like, I did. I already did. Right. <laughs> I put 38 points on the board. Yes. Yes. Like exactly. I, I did my part. <laughs> like, yeah, I just imagine as a, you know, as an offense, it's probably really demoralizing to, uh, to have to go back out there with less than a minute left going like, all right, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess we'll hope somebody holds in the end zone. <laughs> and <laughs> our quarterback threw for more than 300 and ran for more than 100. <laughs> He had a perfect passer rating going into the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Other than the our complete inability to find one healthy running back for now <laughs> more than one full season. <laughs> I, I I don't know what you, I don't know what you do. I, I I really don't know what you do. Like I I don't think it matters. I think we could be uh, 5 and 5 come first week in november and i think that's when it really starts to matter <laughs> right and, and you could you could end up 12 and 5 or whatever or 11 and 6 and get into the playoffs and then it's a crap shoot but i it, not encouraged not encouraged by a running back yeah that's yeah that's true the good news is that it's looking like the afc north is like a nine win division. <laughs> it's year. really bad. It's like the NFC East. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> if all you have to do, you could probably win this. <laughs> like you could be, you could lose like five games in a row and probably still carry this division. If you, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's just the kind of, uh, kind of start everybody's off to. It's like, I mean, and it was funny. We were talking, it's like, well, most teams kind of start out sluggish because of how preseason has changed, except for right. the bills. But like, Right. No, no, these teams all look bad. Like, yeah, <laughs> offensive line can't protect Burrow. He's running for his life all the time. It's like they Pittsburgh is whatever they are at this point. <laughs> Cleveland's quarterback just simply can't stop harassing Masan, <laughs> so they can't <laughs> use their actual you know Pro Bowl quarterback that they traded for for the first what what is it nine games or whatever yes the very normal number of suspension of yes. nine games makes yes. a lot of sense yeah. uh and it's like so so Cleveland's kind of a non-factor for the first part of the season probably so it's like yeah you just you just tread water <laughs> and you get you know you get at least one more win than loss you probably win the division and get a home playoff game so you know yeah, Cincinnati not being good this year really helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was like that was the consensus. Gosh, they were. I mean, they were in the Super Bowl last year. Most of, they have most of the same pieces coming into the new new team, yeah. and it's like I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like like there was a clerical error last year that somehow allowed <laughs> them to get as far as they did, and <laughs> yes. and this year nature is healing and remembering that they're the Bengals. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Somewhere Marvin Lewis <laughs> has, has a wry smile. <laughs> Not so easy, is it? <laughs> I try to keep on keeping on.